First up, I'm going to apologise for the title. When I looked at the title on the abstract last week, I actually thought, who on earth came up with that stupid title? And I wanted to blame Matt and then I wanted to blame Dave, but I wrote it, so it's my fault. Um, so peerwise, well, chemistry have just started um, dabbling in peerwise. And to be honest, I could just put this slide up for the talk. It's for the Vygotsky Construction Company. And it's a whole b bunch of folk, and you're not sure who's the tutors and who's the students, and they're building something. They are constructing stuff. So Peerwise is a tool that most of us who go to things like physics and chemistry education conferences have been bombarded with hearing about for about the past two years. But it's it was actually developed in 2007. So it's a lot been around for a lot longer than I maybe give it credit for. The simple concept behind Peerwise is it's for students to create do and moderate multiple choice questions. So they can write their own questions, they have to write an explanation, and then they have to answer each other's, basically. Now, why were we doing it? Well, we redesigned our first year a couple of years ago, and one of the things we were dead keen to do was have something that promotes continuous engagement with our lecture material. So we wanted a wee bit of the module mark to be an incentive to the students to study a little bit more regularly. And yeah, we could have made it something that was entirely formative, but we kind of all know that they just, a lot of them just don't do it. So in 2012-13, we did problem sheets. There was four or five per semester. They handed them in every two weeks at the start of a three-hour session. Students submitted them at two, and then a group of us would frantically sit marking them for two hours before trying to give whole class feedback at 4 p.m. And the whole class feedback was generally a train wreck because after two hours of working, the students were no place to sit and listen to us at all and it wasn't doing quite what we intended. One thing we were clear about though was it was a purely effort based mark. Zero, no submission. One, some effort. Two, good effort. Didn't matter whether they got the answers right or not, they had to have shown effort for it because we were trying to encourage them to actually study. So last May we decided to have a go at this peerwise thing and we started out gently using it to support some of our <laughs> students who were doing summer reassessment. Then we decided to jump in feet first this year. So this is the top page for Peerwise. Um, every institution <laughs> has their own section in it, so there's a Keel section. Basically, the students will make an account and they will create multiple choice questions. Now, all the literature on Peerwise says the interface is very intuitive for students to use. It is. It's kind of just like using Gmail. This time for this year, we've set three deadlines per semester, and the students have to write two questions, answer about 10, and comment on each other. And the commenting bit is really important in Peerwise, because that's the bit where they get into a wee bit of a fight with one another over the right answer. And the concept of the right answer is also very important in Peerwise. And we've kept the engagement scheme, so students that maybe only write one question in the time period will only get <coughs> a mark of one, students who've written two and done all the rest will get a mark of two. Now this is an example of what a question looks like. So at the top here, <coughs> there is a question box and there's a wee bit of information. It tells, the, tells you how many folk have tried the question and what rating it's been given. So students can rate questions on how hard they think they are. It's a one to five scale. Our student questions currently have an average of 2.89. So I think we need to encourage them a little bit more towards difficulty. There are multiple choice questions, so there are obviously a few things that are sensible. And it's actually a three-step process for the students to answer the question. First of all, they click an answer. Then they get taken to another screen where there is an explanation about the question. It shouldn't just be the correct answer. It should be a bit of the background theory. What are the concepts? What are the ideas? They then get, they get on that screen the chance to view what everybody else picked as the first answer. And then they can confirm their answer or they can change their mind. So there's an opportunity between that first answer and finalising their answer to sort of challenge their own misconceptions and have a rethink. Or there's a chance for them to leave comments for the author of the question and say, the, the answer you chose is not right. And that happens in a few ca cases. The explanation usually appears down here, but it's been cut off when I screenshotted it. So the students have to take part in two main processes, and the question authoring side of it does require a little bit of scaffolding to get them on the right track so they know what they're doing. 
At the heart, they have to create multiple choice questions. Now, this peer-wise tool has been used across a lot of disciplines. Uh, chemistry, physics, and maths are fairly obvious for multiple choice, but anthropology, political science, and medicine as well. So it's being used quite a lot around the world in a variety of disciplines. The question editor allows students to add YouTube videos, pictures, they can draw pictures themselves, they can nick them off the internet, and they can add equations. So they can create quite complex scenarios for their multiple choice questions. They then have to give answer options, and we recommend that they give th between three and five, with four obviously being optimal. And they have to indicate what their preferred answer is, but critically, not, we're not calling it the correct answer. Because if a student's got a misconception, their preferred answer may not be correct. This gives them the option of backing out gracefully when they have to change it. And they have to put in some appropriate distractor answers. And you have to do a little bit of work with them so that they understand what makes an appropriate distractor. The previous question, they had to work out what word began with O, so if all the distractors had um, began with P, it wouldn't really work. <laughs> but they're chemistry students, you never trust it. And then they have to write an explanation, so they have to explain some of the theory, why the distractors may not be correct, what mistake people may have made in coming up with one of the distractor answers. But importantly, it shouldn't just be the correct answer. And then they can tag each question with topics relating to the course. And the list of tags we've generated for one semester of chemistry is actually quite extraordinary. Answering, they can answer questions by topics or they can follow their favourite authors. I should say this is all completely anonymous. They do not know who is writing the questions. I tag my questions with my <coughs> initials because they've claimed that they want more tutor-written questions, so they know which ones are mine. But generally, anyone in the class is writing questions answered by anyone else. So they answer their question, they deal with the explanations, they're told if their answer agrees with the author's answer, they can confirm or change their answer, chance to do the calculation again or just have a rethink, and then they're encouraged to write comments. So if they think the distractor answers are ambiguous or there could be more than one right answer, they, they can say it then. <coughs> the only problem we have in that, and it's come through in our evaluation so far, is a lot of our students don't have the strategy to deal with that politely. So they don't quite know how to sort of say, hang on, I think your question's crap, but could you maybe rewrite it? And there's been a few comments that, the qu that some of the students have been quite rude on it. So I'm intrigued to find, out, find those comments. <coughs> so these are the topics that they've done this semester. Um, that overwhelmed me when I saw it. Some are variations of the same thing, different students, different spellings. Um, it's unedited for spelling, some of them made me laugh. But you can see it's quite a rich bank of questions for revision. There are, I think, 470 questions being written this semester by 59 students. And no, th 370 questions and 4,090 answers. In terms of staffing, we could not create a question bank that rich. Setup and support is pretty straightforward. Peerwise is free, although they do ask for donations. I believe it runs on somebody's PC in their office. Um, guy in New Zealand. You have to create an admin account, you upload student identifiers, we just use student numbers. The students all create their own accounts, um, encourage them to link it with their email address, otherwise when they forget their password it's a bit of a nightmare. And then the general support I've had to do for our chemists has just been resetting passwords and then reminding them of the deadlines and the expectations every now and then. We did an introductory session and week three of semester one of year one, standing in front of a bunch of first year students and letting rip a phrase like Vygotsky's zone of proximal development <laughs> um, was an interesting experience. We introduced the concept <laughs> of multiple choice questions, talked a bit about the need for good distractors. We did the Grunge Prowkers MCQ test for which I can't find the original author. There's about 10 different attributions available on the internet and in various papers I read. Then you have to kind of explain why we're not just shirking our responsibilities. Why is it actually valuable for students to write their own questions and address this thing? You're sort of letting them into the, the club then. You're telling them, well, you've got all these misconceptions and we're going to root them out and you're going to learn better. Then we trooped off to the computer classroom because I was a little cynical about um, whether they'd actually be able to use the interface, but they did fine. There's various metrics. Um, students can earn badges and there's leaderboards they can access so they can see their performance relative to each other. We can see the access logs so we can see who's answered what, who's written what. 
and then you can review questions that they've written if you need to. So one of our first year students particularly likes the badges because their friends can have a bit of a competition. These are the number of questions contributed per day, and this is a pretty typical distribution for anyone using Peerwise for any kind of deadline. Deadline day, deadline day, and deadline day. <laughs> There's really enough said. Questions answered, and we're hoping that this bit is going to grow substantially as they use it as a revision tool. And I keep sending them wee reminders by email going, don't forget to answer the questions. So you can see that I feel sorry for the people who are trying to answer questions here for their deadline because they're not getting all the new written ones that are only done on the last day. We've done some evaluation in our module questionnaires. It came out that it was a useful revision tool. They wanted more input from tutors. They wanted us to go in and moderate questions and say whether they were right or not. So I think when we reintroduce it for the second semester, we're going to address some of this. Some students very definitely have a love-hate relationship with it. There were a few comments of, I hate this and I wish it banished from humanity. That kind of thing, you know. Um, but it was okay. Got some numerical stuff. So the website's fine. One student didn't like it. Questions. I don't know whether that, question, that particular evaluation was a bit of an insult to their... Um, egos or not, that they, they didn't find anything very difficult. They could handle writing multiple choice questions. Generally prefer to answer questions and then write them, which is probably fair enough in terms of difficulty. But they do think it helps them to learn, which is part of the battle we're waging. Don't like writing feedback. That's one of the main things I'm going to address in week one this semester. <coughs> and then a few other things. The majority did not find the task pointless. So these are some of the resources. This is mainly for online. Peerwise website itself. Uh, the physicists up at Edinburgh have done some cracking stuff on scaffolding and how to introduce Peerwise. Um, one of the links towards this quiz, it was deemed by some students the best test they'd ever done. <laughs> <laughs> and it was amazing how many of them got full marks once they worked out the secrets. And then this is an education and chemistry article written by two physicists, curiously enough, on Peerwise, from which the cartoon comes. Do you have any questions? <laughs>